Good day, everyone, and welcome to today's Tyson Fury International Conference Call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. Later, you will have the opportunity to ask questions during the question and answer session. You may register to ask a question at any time by pressing the star and one on your touchtone phone. Please note this call may be recorded, and it is now my pleasure to turn the call over to Evan Korn. Please go ahead. Hey, welcome everyone to the international conference call featuring Tyson Fury, the lineal heavyweight champion of the world who takes on undefeated WBC world champion and feared KO artist Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder, Saturday, February 22nd, in a historic joint presentation by Fox Sports Pay-Per-View and ESPN Plus Pay-Per-View, live from the MPM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas. Uh, you can check your local cable listings to order or order the fight directly on the Fox Sports app or ESPN Plus app. The pay-per-view broadcast will begin at 9 p.m. Eastern Time Sharp. So before we kick things over to Tyson Fury, I'd like to introduce the chairman and founder of Top Rank, Mr. Bob Arum, for his opening statement. Hey, thank you very much, Evan. Well, we're a little over a week away from the uh, biggest uh, heavyweight championship match in decades. Uh, we can't wait uh, for... Fight night, uh, the response uh, from everybody, uh, from cable uh, systems, satellite providers, uh, digital platforms have been enormous. I want to thank especially uh, ESPN and Fox for the magnificent way they have both stepped up to the plate to help us promote this fight. Uh, I want to also take this opportunity to thank my friends at PVC who have worked uh, so well with my staff at Top Rank uh, to make this such a great event. And of course, uh, giving kudos to the two fighters uh, who have uh, been amazing in the comments they have made uh, about the fight to the press respecting each other's ability, but confident in the fact that each of them believe that they will win. And I'm particularly impressed uh, and very thankful uh, for Tyson Fury, who has shown the world how you as a participant promote a big event like this heavyweight championship match. Tyson has done a marvelous job communicating to the press and having watched them in the gym uh, sparring. Uh, I'm telling everybody that he's on the top of the game and you're going to see a masterful performance from Tyson on February 22nd. Thanks, Evan. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Bob. And now we will uh, kick things over to Tyson Fury for his opening statement. Tyson? First of all, God bless you, Bob Arum, for that intro, excellent intro. Um, yeah, I've been training very, very hard for the last eight weeks in Las Vegas. Um, I was training four or five weeks before that back in the UK. I've never, ever, ever been as focused or as ready for one fight as I am for this fight. I have pulled out all the stops that anyone could ever pull out for a training camp. I have not, oh, I've not left anything unturned. Every box has been kicked. We are going to see the best Tyson Fury that Tyson Fury can be. Last time, I only had a couple of fights back, six months activity after three years out the room. This time, I've had well over a year of activity. Um, I'm coming off five, five victories back to back. I've just come off a good 12-round uh, contest back in uh, the end of last year. I'm match fit. I'm ready. I'm confident. Sparring's been going well. I'm injury-free. No excuses my end. I'm ready for a war, one round or 12. Uh, thank you, Tyson. And, and shortly, we are going to kick things over to the press. You can ask questions for other Tyson or Bob. Thank you. At this time, if you would like to ask a question, please press star and one on your touchtone phone. If you find that your question has been asked, you may remove yourself with the pound key. Our first question comes from Dan Raphael from ESPN. Please go ahead. 
Thank you very much, hello everybody. Uh, Tyson, good to talk to you today. Uh, my first question for you, Tyson, is uh, given that you have 12 rounds of experience against uh, Deontay Wilder in your first fight from a couple years ago, I wonder what do you think uh, the biggest adjustment is that you need to make in this particular matchup, knowing that you already went 12 rounds with the guy before and you've seen what he has? The biggest mistake I made last time was not uh, making him pay when he was hurt. You know, I didn't know what I had in the tank last time. I'd never been uh, 12 rounds in a long time. This time, I know I can do the distance, and when I get him hurt, I'll throw everything but the kitchen sink at him, and he won't know what to him. What do you think also in, in, that, in that fight the first time around that you learn most about him that you think you can exploit in the rematch? I learned that he can be hit and he can be hurt quite regular. Um, that, that's the biggest thing that I learned about Deontay Wilder. Nothing I didn't already know. Um, before, before I fought him, obviously, I didn't know what he was like in a boxing ring. And after I fought him, uh, I know what he's like now. And, and I said, there's nothing to worry about. He's got a big right hand and that's it. You know, he's, he's a one-dimensional fighter and I'm going to prove that on the 22nd of February. So, Tyson, do you think you going into this matchup have more confidence because you went the 12 rounds? A lot of people thought you won. You outboxed him for a long stretch. You survived the knockdown. Or is there a concern because you did get knocked down twice, particularly hard in the 12th round? Like, which one is it? No, there's, uh, there's, there's no, there's no uh, stress to me going into the fight. You know, I've been 12 rounds of him, outboxed him quite comfortable. Took his best shots, got up, fired back into him. Um, the one who should be concerned is Deontay Wilder because with him being a one-trick pony, he's a knockout artist, but he had me down twice in two rounds, nine and 12, um, and he had over two minutes in each round to finish me, and he couldn't finish me. It was like that mortal comeback. They said, finish him! And he couldn't finish him. Um, so, yeah, he's the one who should be concerned. He's landed the two best punches that any heavyweight in the world could ever land on somebody else. And the Gypsy King rose like a phoenix from the ashes back to me feet and hurt him in the end of the round. So, yeah, it's going to be pretty difficult for Wilder, not me. This is heavyweight boxing. I've been hit, I've been hurt, I've been put down in my career. But it's not when we get put down. It's what happens when we get back up and keep moving forward. And our next question comes from Keith Eidick from BoxingScene.com. Please go ahead. Uh, Tyson, on a conference call a couple of days ago, uh, Deontay Wilder's trainer said that he felt that Deontay Wilder's boxing ability and his ring IQ was underrated. I was just wondering how you would assess his, you know, being the, t the skillful boxer that you are, would assess his, his boxing ability and his ring IQ. You no, know, he's got a lot of experience. He's got over 40 professional contacts. Um, you now, what he doesn't know about boxing now at 34 years old, he's not, he's not gonna, he's not gonna know it. I thought his boxing IQ was okay. It was it wasn't up there with the likes of someone like Vladimir Klitschko, but it, it, he was he was decent. You know, he's always looking dangerous. He always looks imposing and dangerous. So you can never write somebody off like that. That's for sure. Tyson, there's been a lot of talk since uh, since you fought him, and, and he's had two uh, big knockouts and everything. That he's arguably the biggest puncher in boxing history. Even Bob himself has said maybe that that's true. I was just wondering what, having felt his power, what you think of it and how it maybe compares to Klitschko and other people that you fought. You know, I felt the power. Ain't so bad. Ain't so bad. He can't be the biggest punch in history because he couldn't knock the Gypsy King out, could he? I took his best shot, push on the chin and got back up. You know, he punches hard, but, you know, I've never been hit by the likes of someone like Ernie Shavers. I didn't get hit by George Foreman. I didn't get hit by uh, Rocky Marciano or any of those top guys. I didn't get hit by them, so I can't comment. So to say he's the biggest punch in history, I'm not really sure because I didn't get hit by all the guys in history. But, you know, I don't think he punches harder than Vladimir Klitschko. Vladimir has a massive knockout uh, punch. A lot more fights than Wilder as well, 65 contests. Um, make no mistake, all heavyweights punch hard, and they can all knock anybody out. Wilder, I don't think it's so much his power. It's, his, um, it's the speed it lands. Which is uh, it can be tricky when you're not when you don't see it coming. But then again, any, even a guy who's got no knockout ratio, if you if he hits you and you don't see it coming, then he's going to put you down. But actually feeling punches in fight, I'm not familiar with it because I don't feel any punches when I'm in the ring because the adrenaline's flying high and you're in a fight you don't feel the punches ever. And our next question comes from Brian Campbell from CBS Sports. Please go ahead. 
Thanks so much. Tyson, when you said in both press conferences that you're training for the knockout, you're predicting a second-round knockout, the reaction of most people have been that you're planting a mind trick or, or, or trying to sort of uh, hide your strategy. How would you address the doubters who don't believe that this is your intention? Well, they won't have to wait long to find out, will they? Ten days for that. Nine days. Thirteenth today, sorry. Nine days and we're there. So it's not, it's not very long to see if I'm a bluffing or I'm telling the truth. You know, it's, uh, this is boxing. Many people have said many things in the past. But we'll see if I'm mad enough to back it up, eh? If this is your intention, how much did the judging in the first fight against Wilder, uh, you know, play in you wanting to alter your strategy like this? It played a massive role because it's made me uncomfortable. It's made me do things I didn't want to do. But, you know, when we're taken out of our comfort zone and pressed and pressed and pressed, then we uh, become better. So it was almost like a blessing in disguise that I didn't get the decision because I would have kept working on my boxing. Um, just box, 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 box. Um, you know, I believe I can out- outbox Deontay Wilder. They're very, very comfortable. But the fact of the matter is, I believe I outboxed him comfortable last time. But it's no good me believing it. The judges have to believe it. Um, and to guarantee a victory, I've got to get a knockout because, you know, I don't want to leave anything unturned this time. I don't want another controversial decision. I don't want people to say, oh, well, he won, no, he won, whatever. I want it to be a defining win, either way. You know, um, the boxing side of it, one judge had it 114, uh, 112 or something, 113, and then one judge had it like 117, 110, 116, 110. So I'm not sure what fight that, that judge was watching, but, you know, I'm not a judge. Um, these guys see what they see. That's their personal opinion. That's what they get paid to do. So, yeah. But in order to guarantee a victory, I think you've got to take, take it out of anybody's hands. My own destiny lies within my own two fists. Tyson, given the terms of the contract and the potential for a third fight with the loser having the option of, from what we've heard publicly, are you preparing your mind that you're going to fight Wilder twice this year, no matter what happens? You know, one fight at a time, I'm only nine days from the biggest fight in my life, so I'm not looking past that, Look, not looking at any other fights. Not, not one other fight in the world matters at the moment, but I only concentrate on one fight at a time. Let's get through this one, then we'll talk business about more fights. And our next question comes from Michael Woods from New York Fights. Please go ahead. Hello, Gypsy King. Hello, Bob Arum. Question for Tyson Fury. Uh, Tyson, you have said that this time we're not going to see the quote-unquote herky-jerky style and you're going to be more uh, offensive and really looking to take it to Deontay Wilder. I do wonder, have you done things in camp, uh, tweaked anything so you will be showing more power? Are you turning your hips more or punching through the target? Uh, What are you doing in camp so uh, this uh, strategy will work uh, uh, on February 22nd? Well, if I told you that, I'd give me full game plan away, wouldn't I? Yeah, I don't. You I know? don't want the full game plan. Maybe just, maybe just ten percent. Well, let's just say I've been sitting down in the pocket and letting letting them fly very aggressively and a high volume of them. Let's just say that. All right, that'll be a fan friendly fight then. That much more. Uh, Tyson, in the first one, uh, you were down a couple times. I am curious. Do you worry? About your chin, do you work on anything to make your chin that much more impregnable, or do you just say, no, yes. uh, I yeah. have confidence in my chin. I know it can hold up. I have got confidence in my chin, but I've been doing a lot of pussy licking to strengthen my jaw up. So, yeah, I've been uh, strengthening the old jaw up as well. All right, good stuff. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Our next question comes from Stephen Muehlhausen from Sporting News. Please go ahead. Thank you, Bob and Tyson, for the time today. And Tyson, just want to, you know, you go back to what Brian said real quickly. And you said this fight is the biggest fight of your life. What makes this fight bigger than the fight you had with Vladimir Klitschko? This fight's the biggest fight of my life. Up to now, you know, Vladimir Klitschko is in the past. It's history. And this fight's active and current. So every fight that I have going forward is, is the biggest fight in my life. 
you talk, you brought in recently uh, Jacob Stitcher and uh, you know to be your uh, your cut man. What was the yeah. decision behind bringing Stitch in? The decision was I got a big cut in my last fight, forty seven stitches across the top of the eye, inside and out, um, and I need someone who's the best at what they do. And Stitch seems to be the best at what he does. So yeah, we're not cutting any corners, that's for sure. Is it a decision? Do you wish you would have brought him in before the fight with Otto, or was it just you had a guy you were you were set on him and you wanted to see what would happen? No, I don't think it makes a difference. You know who was in the corner, unless there was a miracle worker in the corner um, who was good at um, touching cuts and making them not happen. Then yeah, it doesn't matter uh, who's in the corner on that night; you're still going to get a cut either way. And once again, that is star and one to join the question queue. Our next question comes from Jeremy Herridges from fansighted.com. Please go ahead. Hey, Tyson. Thank you for uh, taking the time to talk with us today. Um, obviously, you know, going in the ring with, with Deontay, it was a dramatic fight. Um, would you call that the toughest fight of your career, or would you say that you've been tested more than that one fight? I wouldn't say that was the toughest fight. I'd say that was one of my easiest fights, to be fair. Um, other than the two mm-hmm. knockdowns, it was a pretty one-sided fight. Um, yeah, I've had much difficult fights than that before. Much, much more harder than that. Deontay Wilde is not my toughest opponent, that's for sure. Um, my toughest opponent in my full career was Steve Cunningham. He was a former cruiserweight champion. And I fought him in about 2013 in New York, Madison Square Garden. And that was the toughest fight I ever had. And our next question comes from Tony Page from New York Daily News. Please go ahead. Hey, Tyson. Tyson, what's going on? What's going on, sir? Real quick question. I just got one question for you. You say you're going to knock out Deontay Wilder. You you didn't do it in the first fight. Do you see something or do you see a weakness in his game that will make you exploit it and knock him out? It's not about what Deontay Wilder does. It's It's about what I do. I don't think about the opponent. The opponent means nothing to me. You know, I've got to concentrate on what I do not what he does. It's all about what I do on the night, not about what he does, which gets a knockout. Thank you. And our next question comes from Sean Kroos from Boxing Insider. Please go ahead. Hi, Champ. Thanks for taking the time out to talk to all of us. I just have uh, one simple question. When you realized that you needed to be more aggressive this time around to get a guaranteed win, was that what led you to training with Sugar Hill Stewart uh, more than perhaps another trainer that might be more defensive-minded? Yeah, I, I had a good defensive coach, Ben Davison. We worked on a lot of defense every single day for two years. It was defense, defense, defense. So I needed an aggressive trainer. Uh, I worked with Sugar Hill in the past. I knew he was a good guy. Um, I knew we got on well, which is very important. Communication is the key to any good relationship. Um, that's why I brought him in. And it's been one of the best decisions I've ever made, ever. Great. Thank you so much and all the best. No problem. Our next question comes from Tar- Carlos Toro from Fightful. Please go ahead. Thanks so much. Thanks, Tyson, for taking time to talk to us. You know, earlier in the call, you talked about the readiness, you know, in this fight compared to the first fight. Obviously, you had the very tough fight against Otto Valin. Do you believe that that fight maybe perhaps prepared you for a uh, for you to have to go into deep waters against Deontay Wilder this time around compared to your first two fights coming back right before the first fight against Deontay? For sure. You know, it, um, going the distance in good fights, it really does sharpen your your match fitness. Um, I was happy that the last fight was a tough fight and it wasn't just a blow over because it prepares me more for the Deontay Wilder Battle Royale. Um, we both had two quick knockouts in the first two fights we had. He knocked out Dominic Brazil in the round. I knocked out Tom Schwartz in two rounds. And then in the second fight, I got a good 12 rounds in and he got a good seven rounds in. So we're both coming into this fight with, with match fit, you know, both coming very active. Um, into this, this next fight. All right. Thanks, Tyson. Best of luck. It's February 22nd. Thank you. And our next question comes from Keith Eidick from BoxingScene.com. Please go ahead. 
Uh, Tyson, you mentioned a few minutes ago that the Steve Cunningham fight was the toughest of your career. I know you were down yeah. in that fight. Can you can you elaborate on what made that fight the, the toughest for you? At that time in my in me, me life, I'd never fought anybody like Steve Cunningham. He was a he won the IBF title, like I defended it, and maybe seven times or something like that. He was unified champion, and it was my first step up, like onto anybody with that type of ability. Um, and he was slick, and he was uh, hard to hit. He was very awkward, and he was a very good boxer. So that was the toughest fight in my life. Going into that fight, you know, Steve was a smaller heavyweight. Did did you underestimate him? Maybe going into that fight. No, I never underestimated him. He was six foot three, two hundred and ten pounds. Uh, he was probably taller than Evander Holyfield and bigger as well. So you know, we say small heavyweights, but they're really big heavyweights. But today, the heavyweights have gone super size. So yeah, he um, was a tough opponent. I didn't underestimate him. He was just a very, he was a very good guy, very good boxer. I just have one other question for you, Tyson. Uh, how much did it help? You know, changing trainers is never easy, but. How much did it help, though, that you knew uh, Javon Stewart and and didn't have to get it to know a new trainer entirely? It was very it was very helpful. You know, we uh, we, we knew each other from the past, um, and it was helpful because we just gelled straight away. There was no like getting used to each other and all that. We just went straight to work in an old-fashioned type manner. Would you have changed to a trainer that you weren't familiar with, or would you not have done that? I wouldn't have done it, no. Okay. Because we only had we only had eight weeks to prepare for the fight, and it takes a few weeks to get used to a new trainer and to, to gel and the personalities. You never know what you're getting with new trainers and all that, but the fact that we worked together in the past, we knew each other, we kept in touch, we spoke to each other over the years, it was, it was really helpful. We just got straight down to work. Thanks, Tyson. Thank you. And our next question comes from Hans Demisko from Round by Round. Please go ahead. Hey, um, is Bob still on the line? Yeah. Hey, yes. Bob. So my question is for you. Um, I know Tyson said that he wanted to, you know, go for the knockout. But, you know, it has been several occasions where you've come out and said that Tyson is one of the best pure boxers you've ever seen. Um, so does it kind of concern you when he comes out with a game plan like that, wanting to knock out Wilder, but, you know, that kind of plays into his hands when you know he can pretty much outbox him for the full 12 round? Well, you, you know, I have confidence in Tyson because, you know, there are guys who say they're going to knock out their opponent, and it's like a baseball player getting up to the plate and trying to hit a home run. Uh, when anybody who knows baseball will say – that the guy who looks to make contact has a better chance to hit a home run than the guy that's swinging from his heels. So Tyson is a great boxer, but he has a determination to knock out Wilder, and he knows that he's not going to force it, and the knockout will come. And that unlike the first fight, when he gets Wilder into trouble, and Wilder was in trouble at a couple of times in that fight, he's not going to let him off the hook. He's going to go for the knockout. Gotcha. And just my last question is for um for um, for Tyson. Um, you've done just about everything. Well, for the most part, just about everything in the in the heavyweight division. Um, millennial champ. You've had just about every belt. Um, you fought a lot of great fighters. Um, the one thing I don't believe you you've gotten yet is the WBC belt because the Klitschko had it. You, yeah, Klitschko didn't have it at the time that you fought him. So you know, I I know you've kind of made it. You know, you kind of let it be known that, you know, nothing really gets you going so much because it's just like, hey, I already had that belt. I already did this. I already did that. So when you when it comes to the WBC belt, do you kind of look at that like, okay, this is something that I really want? I know you really want to be Wilder. When you look at the belt itself, you're just like, hey, that's the one thing I didn't achieve yet. You know, I always like challenges. The WBC is the one that's escaped me over the years for whatever reasons. I, I never got my hands on it yet. Um, and it will be to finish off my collection of all the belts that there is to offer out there, and that would be every single one of them. So yeah, it would be it would be nice to finish the collection off for sure. Gotcha. Thank you. Appreciate it, and good luck, man. Good luck. Good luck. Our next question comes from Dan Raphael from ESPN. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, Low Tyson. I just had a follow up question for you. Uh, you know, you have the big win against uh, Vladimir Klitschko on your record. You've got some other good wins, Chisora, whatnot. 
A lot of people thought you won the first fight with Deontay. If you win this second fight, what do you think this does for the legacy of Tyson Fury, particularly because you have said that you don't have very many more fights left after this? Yeah, I'm not really too concerned about the legacy. I've done what I've done. And when I'm finished with boxing, I don't care about the legacy at all. Um, but the fact of the matter is I care about being active and I care about what's happening now. So, yeah, I think the Wilder fight cements me. Winning this fight cements me as the best of my era. Um, no more to prove. Everyone else has been defeated. Um, and there was only me and Deontay Wilder left who were unbeaten after 12 years as professionals. So it's all on the line for this fight. I think it, it's a massive must for me. It's a massive must to win. But no, but you really, I mean, I've, I've, I rarely do I hear boxers say that they literally don't care about their legacy. I have to believe that after yeah. your long career that you don't have some part of you that wants to be remembered in a, in a really positive way for everything you've accomplished. You know, I'm not really concerned about what happens when I'm gone. You know, when I'm gone means I'm retired. And when I'm retired means I'm on to other things. Um, and that'll be another chapter of my life. So, you know, we can only take one chapter of our lives at, at, at a time. Um, and I'm just enjoying and living in the moment right now. I'm living my dream, my childhood dream, my young adult dream, and my mid midlife uh, dreams. Um, and like I say, I really don't care about legacy, and that, that's the fact of the matter. <laughs> because what, what somebody thinks of me when I'm finished is really unimportant because it's all sticks and stones, whether it's good or bad. Um, everyone is entitled to their opinion. And there'll be somebody else to replace me, just like everybody else, every other champion in history. More other young guys have come along and, and took that place, and, and that's that's how the food chain works. Fair enough. I'd, I'd like to ask Bob uh, that question also. Bob, are you still there? Yes. Yeah, I'm here. So you heard Tyson, I think, say that he that you know with the victory against Wilder uh, on February 22nd that you know he doesn't care about what it would say what people would say about it in terms of his legacy. But you've been around for a long time, seen a lot of great heavyweights. Where do you think? What do you think Tyson Fury's legacy would be uh, with this victory? Well, I think that everybody would have to recognize him as one of the great heavyweight champions of all time. I mean, you know, uh, uh, it seems to me. You know, and I've been through in my years in boxing, uh, heavyweight champions uh, that go back before uh, most of you writers were born. I mean, starting with Ali and uh, Joe Fraser and Foreman and uh, uh, Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield and Lennox Lewis uh, and uh, Joshua and Wilder. And uh, when... Uh, uh, Tyson does what I expect him to do on February 22nd. Uh, he definitely will belong with those immortals. All right, very good. Thank you for that, Bob. Thank you, Tyson. Appreciate it. Thank you. Our next question comes from Michael Woods from New York Fights. Please go ahead. Follow-up well, question for the Gypsy King. Uh, Tyson, you said that you don't really so much care what the other guy brings to the table. It's what you're able to do. But I feel like Wilde, to me, seems as confident as he's ever been. I, I wonder, do you assess him the same way? Or, or no, it, his mindset really doesn't matter to you. Yeah, my, his mindset is none of my concern. Every fight I've ever fought has been confident they're going to win. Because if they wasn't, they'd be in the wrong game. That's for sure. As, as performing athletes, as, as champions, you always believe you're going to win. But it hasn't affected me so far in my career that every other opponent I've ever fought thought he was going to win, and they didn't. You know, it doesn't matter what the opponent's mindset is. It's about what, what mindset I've got going into the ring and what game plan I, I execute in there. And that's all it comes down to. Wilder can be the best Wilder he ever wants to be. But if my mindset's totally concrete on winning, then I'm going to win, for sure. And it's how much you want it. And I believe I want this more than Deontay Wilder does. Deontay Wilder wants to be a, a famous guy. He wants to be an actor. He wants to be on TV. He's into all that life, lifestyle and all that. He's just what I'd call a social climber. He wants to be something he's not. Me, I don't, I don't care for all of that stuff. I don't care about being famous. I don't care about being uh, somebody wants to shake my hands or be on TV. None of that stuff means anything to me. The only thing that means something to me is winning these fights. That's it, period. And when the boxing's over, that's it for me. There's no more pain. There's no more money because I won't be taking any more steps to be a, to be an actor or to be a singer or to be something like that because it doesn't interest me. I'm a purebred fighting man. 
through and through. And when it's over, it's over. That's it. Nothing else matters to me. Fair enough. You've spoken uh, how you see your legacy. That makes sense. I am wondering, though, about the present. You win this fight, and do you think the case could be made that really uh, you win this, that you deserve to be maybe regarded as the best pound-for-pound boxer on the planet? Well, I'm not sure about all that pound-for-pound stuff. I'm not too sure how it works. I think it's like uh, fantasy baseball, isn't it, where everyone just has an opinion on who they think is the best or whatever. Um, right. The pound-for-pound stuff, I've never really been uh, able to follow it because it's like saying if a, an eagle had feet, it'd be able to run faster than an ostrich. Uh, right. Or, you know, if a cow could fly, could it fly faster than an aeroplane? It's just people's opinion, like randomly making up stuff, but... I'm not. I'm not sure about how that works, but you know, the one thing I do know is when I beat Deontay Wilder, I'll be the best heavyweight of my era, standing alone. Very good stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you. Question comes from James Bell from the Boxing Source. Please go ahead. All right. Uh, this question is for Tyson Fury. Um, one of the things that is a topic going into this particular fight is your weight and how comfortable you are coming into this fight in comparison to your first fight. Um, how do you feel with your current weight going into this fight that's coming up in nine days? Yeah, I feel comfortable with the weight. I'm already there where I want to be. I'm not trying to lose weight. I'm not trying to put weight on. I'm a giant heavyweight, uh, meeting clean, eating well. And whatever weight I weigh in on the night is uh, really unimportant. You know, you've seen heavyweights coming at 200 pounds. You've seen them coming at 300 pounds. The heavyweight division has no limit. So it's, uh, it's one of those things. Now, years ago, Emmanuel Stewart talked about uh, you and Deontay Wilder being uh, two of the top heavyweights uh, coming up to this particular point. Uh, with you now uh, training with Sugar Hill Stewart, uh, what does this mean to you to like pretty much come almost full circle from that particular point years ago with Emmanuel Stewart to now? Fantastic, isn't it? You know, it's... Um... It's only thinking that 12 years ago, 10 years ago, Emmanuel called all this, and it's come back to reality. And Sugar Hill's training me as nephew, so it's, uh, it's great that uh, I'm actually having these big fights and having the influence of the Cronk Gym and Emmanuel Stewart in the corner. And our next question comes from Don Hewitt from Boxing TV. Please go ahead. Hi, Tyson. Um, I'm probably one of the few English people to speak with you today. Um, I know everybody's excited back home. Um, looking at the interview with um, John Fury and David Hay, um, John Fury said that he, um, we saw the best of uh, Deontay Wilder. Uh, would you agree with that? Yeah, I think we've seen the best of Deontay Wilder. He's 34 years old. I don't think you get better after 34, do you? That's for sure. I think you, um, you you hit a, a point in your career, and that's called the uh, the prime the prime year career, the pinnacle. And then you after that pinnacle, you slide down, and that's that's what happens. History tells that story. So Deontay Wilder's at the pinnacle of his career. The only place he can go now, he can either extend that pinnacle or he can slide down. So yeah, he's not going to get any better. He's uh, he's at he's, uh, he's at his best. Absolutely. Um, and talking from a different perspective, uh, especially here in the UK, uh, you're known as a real, real advocate of uh, mental health. And um, for the, all these people, you know, getting up off the ground in the 11th, in, sorry, the 12th round of, of the last fight, you really showed that true bravery, that true gypsy fighting spirit. What have you got to say to all the, the people out there in the UK and all around the world who are struggling with mental health? The best message I can give is you can do it. It's never over until it's over. Seek medical advice immediately. And communication is key to everything. You know, if you don't talk about things, you're never going to get things right. Things will never come back to how they were unless you talk about them. Bottling mental health is one of the worst things anybody can do. I've been there. I've done it all myself. And, you know, I hid it away from a lot of people for a long time. And I exploded. And that's what happens. But if you want to get well again, you've got to seek medical advice and get a routine going in your life. You know, set short-term goals, targets, and achieve them. And that, that's what I did. I used, med- I used uh, training as my medicine, and I used living a healthy lifestyle as a medicine too. 
brilliant. Thanks, Tyson. Final question. Uh, this is coming from Matt and, and, and Alex, one of our, our, our followers. Um, what can us Brits expect from from you? What can we expect from you in this fight? You can expect to see the WBC champion returning home on the 24th of February. And I would like to go ahead and turn it back to Tyson for any closing remarks. Just want to say thank you for everyone taking the time today to interview me and get some questions in. Uh, I believe we went through quite a few stuff there and answered as much as I could. Uh, a big shout out to Bob Aaron for being on the line, taking time of his busy schedule. Um, and don't forget to tune in on ESPN Plus and Fox Pay Per View and BT Sports, February 22nd. Be the most entertaining fight of the last 20 years. Be there or be square. Peace out.